I've been experimenting a bit with the Arduino and I've put together a basic stepping motor uh, program. And this is it over here. Uh, let's do a demo and then we'll look at the hardware and software that makes it work. This is a diagram back here, all included at the end of the video. And it's this hardware right here. So what I've done is I have the Arduino's five volt power supply running over to this board to power it. And then I have four wires back here that run over to the, uh, the uh, controller board for the motor. And then I have the motor and that's pretty much it for the hardware. It's not too difficult. Now what I'm going to do is I'll do the compile and I'll clear the output and then I will reload it up to the Arduino. We'll get a bunch of garbage up here. That is the Arduino syncing and because I'm using a higher baud rate. Okay. So here's the instructions to the user. Counterclockwise is one clockwise is minus one. So we'll put in a minus one just for fun. And then it says enter rotations. I'll put in two and over here we can see that it will rotate twice. and two okay stopping okay so let's go back the other way one and let's say three and there it is rotating these lights are actually strobing but it's happening so fast that the eye can't pick it up but they are they are detecting or they are signaling the pulses going to the motor okay and there it is back again Let's look through the code that makes this thing work. We'll start up here and, and uh, go through it a bit at a time. This is written for the Arduino in C language. It uses that little circuit board is a ULN 2003. I bought it as a Gravitech ROM, uh, ROMT-0647 stepper motor kit. The motor is a 28 BYJ48 motor, five volt, four phase. It has a gear ratio of one to 64. So this is one of those important things. The motor actually turns uh, 64 times in order to get one shaft output. So yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Now the motor itself, the motor itself is uh, 5.625 degrees per step. And therefore there are 64 steps in a 360 degree revolution of the motor. So one revolution, of the motor, not the output shaft, but the motor takes 64 steps. Um, so here we have 64 motor revolutions times 64 to one gear ratio means that it takes 4,096 pulses uh, of the stepping motor to get one output shaft revolution. So yeah, that's a lot. Uh, the advantage of my code here is that I am not using the stepper.h library. In other words, this doesn't, you know, it's not going to pull in a library. It's not going to take up a lot of space. Uh, this code is what you see is what you get. And that's it. Uh, there's uh, nothing else to it. And here's a note. This is much faster if you do not put a serial print, a uh, serial dot print in the routine. Because if you do, if you put it in the wrong place, it will really, really slow things down. Okay, let's look at some of the variables we're using. Uh, here's an integer. Uh, these are the Arduino pins. There's four of them, four, five, six, seven. Uh, these two next variables are strings to get the user input from the serial from COM3 over here. Uh, then I have a float, which is rotate F and you recognize this number is the degrees, uh, pulse is that one pulse gives this many degrees. I don't really use this. Uh, the reason I have this is so I can change motors and if they have different, uh, rotational degrees, then I can easily adapt the code to that. Then I have rotation direction. So this is that minus one and one for the clockwise counterclockwise direction. Then I have rotation speed, which, uh, again, is one of those variables I'm not really using, but, uh, it needs to be greater than or equal to one or the motor uh, gets pulses too fast to actually turn. Okay. Uh, rotation. This is that 4094 number. And you say, wait a minute, that was 4096. Yes. It's 4094 because it's 46, 
4096 minus 1. Wait a minute, that's that's not 4095. Yes, I know, but I suspect because of Arduino math and long long integers and whatever, that when I ran the motor 100 revolutions, if I had 4095, it wouldn't stop in the same place it started, which, it, you know, it was start, uh, stopping long. So I took off one more and it worked perfectly. So again, I suspect Arduino math is catching up with me. Okay, then there's a number of rotations. So this is the number of output shaft rotations that the user wants. Uh, this is a pin. This is just the uh, Arduino pin. So I use this as an index to this up here. Then I have a long integer of rotation and I have another long integer here of X. And these two are really to deal with the fact that when you multiply 4094 times something like 10 revolutions, 100 revolutions or whatever, the numbers get really big. And yeah, so you have to deal with that. And then the last of our variables that we're declaring here is this step sequence number. And it goes to this array down here, which we'll look at next. And scrolling down to our array, this is the step sequence array. And it is how the Arduino tells the 28BYJ motor to step. One step sequence from zero up here down to seven, I should do this, down to seven, is one 4096th of one shaft revolution. So to get the output shaft to turn one time, you have to go from here to here 4096 times. Yes, the Arduino and that board and the motor are doing a lot of work just to, just to move the shaft a little bit. Um, okay, the, uh, the Arduino executes from here to here for clockwise and from here up for counterclockwise. There are four wires, orange, yellow, pink, blue, and the pairs are orange, pink, and yellow, blue. Uh, so let's get, do an example of how this steps through. What happens here is when you see a one here, that means that that position, that wire, that pin is active, it's high, it's produce its electricity is coming out of it is what I'm trying to say. So in this case, the orange wire is, is active. It's hot. There's voltage coming out of it. The other three wires, no, they're turned off. Okay. So that's the orange here. The next step down is, uh, the orange wire and the yellow wire are turned on, but the pink and blue wires are turned off. Then to move it, a little bit more to move that motor just the next little tiny step the uh, orange wire is now turned off only the yellow wire is turned on the pink and blue wires are turned off and now the orange wire is off the yellow wire is on pink wires on blue wires off and then you can see how it goes through here so if you look at these ones through here it's a wave and if you think of this uh, like in three dimensions uh, kind of a spiral. What's happening is that the motor is spiral, spiraling as it steps down through here and turns on wires and turns off wires. And this is how the whole thing works. And this is why I do not need that stepper.h library is because I pretty much uh, hard-coded in the this particular stepping motor. Uh, however, the changes are pretty easy to make, make as we saw up there higher. Okay, so let's continue on down and see how this works. This is void setup. And the first thing is to uh, connect to the comm over here. I'm using a higher speed than normal. Normally people use 9600, but higher speeds actually cause things to happen faster. So I start out as 57600 and you can see that over here. Be sure to set your comm three or it won't work. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the Arduino output pins. I'm going to define them and then set them low. So that's all this little for loop does. So I say for pin equals Arduino pin zero to our uh, pin less than or equal to Arduino pin three and then increment it. And I set up the pin as an output pin and then I define it or I default it rather to low. 
then I print a blank line and then I enter the instructions for the user which you see over here and that's it for the setup. The next routine gets the direction from the user so it does this thing right here the enter direction counterclockwise one clockwise minus one and then it will print out the verification here so let's go through it briefly uh, the name of it is get direction rotate direction is zero in other words we're going to initialize this we're going to print the uh, label here and while serial available is greater than zero uh, we're going to loop through this we have an input character and we're going to go out and we're going to read from here the user input then we're going to ask the question is this a digit did they put in a, a digit or did they put in a minus sign so this is how i am handling a, a negative number so i can get the one and minus one for clockwise and counterclockwise okay if that is the case then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this input character and i'm going to add it to the input string i'm going to concatenate it to say it properly okay so that's the while loop after that uh, we're going to do rotate direction equals uh, an integer of in string so we're going to convert this in string here to an integer and we're going to store it in rotate direction we're going to print the rotate direction which is right there then we're going to reinitialize in string we're going to reinitialize in character and then we are going to call get rotations which is very similar to this routine however what it does is it gets the information here uh, the rotations okay so let's uh, take a look at that this routine get rotations is remarkably similar to this get direction except that the difference is uh, this was uh, the direction of the motor turning and this is the number of revolutions that the that the user is inputting so it's this line right here and it's grabbing this data let's go through it quickly uh, so we initialize this variable rotations and then we print out this message which we saw right here uh, then I do a delay of 3.5 seconds um, that is because I tried many 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 different techniques to try to flush the buffer uh, and then do this while serial available or, or try to do a wait statement rather uh, to wait for user input and there was always some junk left over in the in the buffer that was messing me around so I took the expedient way of dealing with this if you have some good code that will do that please let me know I spent a long time and didn't come up with any great answers okay so this is the delay it gives the user three and a half seconds to enter the rotation uh, and the rotations that they want then while serial available so it's going to going to do this loop just like we did up here uh, we have input character two and we use that to collect what's in serial dot read what's in the serial buffer then if it's a digit in here then we cast it as a character and we concatenate it to this in string two so it's a different variable probably doesn't have to be but uh, i was uh, doing this quickly uh, then rotations equal in string so we convert in string to an integer and we store it in here then we print rotations so that's this number right here and then we initialize the in string two and we're ready for our main loop let's look at our void okay um, so this is our void loop and the first thing it does is says if serial is available if there's something in the window up here then we're going to call get direction which was our routine up here uh, then we're going to do this calculation uh, that has potentially very large numbers and we're going to get uh, our rotations uh, of the motor by doing uh, the rotation which was 4094 times the number of rotations that the user entered so if this is 30 or 100 or whatever this number becomes kind of big okay so then we do this for loop and this is from x equals zero to x less than and if you put in one shaft rotation this number right here will be 4094 
And then of course there's the incrementation. Uh, this loop goes from here down to here. And this code right here will go through 4096 times for one shaft revolution. I keep saying 4096, 4094 for one output shaft rotation. Okay, so then underneath here, this for loop is walking the pins. So pin four, five, six, seven, which is going across this way. So it's going across here, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven, as it goes down here. And then it's going to go through here 40, 96 times. Okay. So when it's doing this, when it's walking the pins, it's going to look at the pin. And if that pin is one, like this, then it's going to set that pin high. If the array says that pin is low, say for example, there a zero, then it will turn the pin off or set it to low. Okay. So that's that for loop again, walking the, the pins. And now what we do is we, uh, do a step sequence number. So that's the index back to here. And if it is uh, clockwise, it's a minus one. So we'll be adding a minus one to this. So we'll be moving backwards uh, through that uh, array. And if it's a one, then we'll mo be moving forward to it. So now you see why I used minus one and one for my, uh, my indicators for clockwise and counterclockwise. It allows me to skip some steps. Okay, so onward. Uh, if step sequence number is greater than or equal to eight, then the step sequence number equals zero. So this is a clockwise circular step sequence from zero to seven. Otherwise, what's going to happen is it's counterclockwise and we need to go from seven to zero. So we're going to start at seven and go the other way. Okay, and then we do that rotation speed delay thing because if you try to do it too fast, if you try to send data too fast to the stepping motor, it just, it just vibrates. It doesn't do anything. Okay. Um, finally we print done. So that's this right here. So that when it's completed its task, it says done. And then down here, what this does is when the task is complete, it will reset all of the pins to low because otherwise you'll find that one of the pins or two or three or four of the pins can all be set to uh, high. Actually, I guess all four cannot be, but at least two of the pins can be set high. And it means that it's just got current flowing out of it for no reason. So what this does is this makes sure that all of the Arduino pins are turned off. Okay. That's it for the software and hardware behind our simple version of a user controlled stepping motor. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your Arduino experimentation.